Hi, I'm Maya Bialik. Don't go anywhere because Profiles is coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Desi Sanchez. Today's guest is actress Maya Bialik, known to millions for her lead role in the 90s NBC sitcom Blossom and for her current role on CBS's The Big Bang Theory. Currently, Maya is also reveling in the success of her new book titled Beyond the Sling, a real life guide to raising confident, loving children. In the book, she offers her own insights and supports them with solid medical and psychological research. After a short break, we'll join our host, Mickey Burns, as he welcomes the popular Mayim Bialik to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. I'm Desi Sanchez. Currently, Mayim Bialik is starring on one of television's hottest sitcoms in the role of Amy Fowler on The Big Bang Theory. On the show, Mayim plays a nerdy neurobiologist, which hits close to home. In real life, she earned a PhD in neuroscience from UCLA in 2007. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location from the Iroquois Hotel in the heart of New York City, as he welcomes actress Mayim Bialik to Profiles. We are going to play the online game. The online game? Bully! <laughs> Gentlemen, as much as I'm sure Sheldon would enjoy playing intergalactic make-believe, he and I have other plans. We are attending my Aunt Flora's 93rd birthday party. Just tell her I can't come. She'll be disappointed if we don't show up. She's 93. She won't be disappointed for very long. <laughs> now, hang on. I followed all the protocols set forth by you in the relationship agreement. I made a written request 72 hours in advance. <laughs> I checked the tire pressure on the car. I even contacted the Centers for Disease Control to find out what shots they recommend for travel to Orange County. <laughs> FYI, it's none. Amy, the relationship agreement was not designed for either one of us to get our way. You use it to get your way. I use it to get the right way. <laughs> the fact that the right way is also my way is a happy coincidence. You gave me your word. You're coming with me. Well, Mrs. Sheldon. Yeah, well, who wants to spend the whole weekend running around a bunch of pretend planets battling made-up monsters? That's for babies. Yeah, but it's got lightsabers. Yeah. Please, Amy, it's got lightsabers. Maya Bialik, welcome to our show Profiles. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. Just got in from L.A.? Yep, <laughs> and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> of course, for our viewers, they know you for currently starring uh, in the hit... CBS series, The Bing Bang Theory. Uh, been enjoying that experience? Yeah, it's great. I mean, to be brought onto a show that's already got its legs under it is, um, is really nice. Yeah. it already is a finely oiled machine. It sure <laughs> is, because you uh, joined the cast in season four, and this is what you said about joining uh, while it was already three seasons in. You said it was like starting uh, in a new high school three weeks <laughs> after school started. I know what that must feel like. Yeah, I mean, everybody also already has their alliances and the way things are normally done. So sure. I think for me and Melissa Roush, who plays Bernadette, it was really coming in and trying to find where we fit. Well, you've adjusted rather quickly, and the show is doing great. <laughs> Thank you. And the ratings are basically through the roof. Yeah. Uh, why, why do you think the show is so popular? I think it, it's popular because we have really smart writers um, uh. who have a very, very good sense of what's funny and why. Um, Chuck Lorre knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. he's, a, mm -hmm. he's a smart man and I think these characters are really beloved and I think being added to the show has given those characters people already love a whole new dimension because they yeah. have new people to interact with. Sure. Uh, now on the show, you play Amy Farrah Fowler, mm -hmm. uh, Sheldon's friend. Mm -hmm. But, of course, we know he's not your girlfriend. Right. My question is, might that change as we move forward? Well, we have a relationship agreement, which <laughs> basically means that nice. nothing has changed. Ah. Um, but we call each other boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. But I think people like them the way they are, so it's yeah. going to be a lot more of that. Uh, now, regarding today's Hollywood, I don't know if you, rem you rem remember saying this, but you said, our industry is full of a lot of women who are models. <laughs> and who bring to the table a very different first glance kind of impression. 
Uh, now, your role on the show is certainly, uh, certainly doesn't fit that classic mm -hmm. mold. How do you feel about that? Well, I think the, the quote you were taking was also a question about kind of what it's like to get parts in the industry. Yes. And the fact is there's a lot of competition from people who were previously musicians or previously models. Um, so it's different, but I think um, what's sweet about this character I play is that um, it's never really been brought up as an issue for her and Sheldon. Yeah. Um, they're happy with each other and they're someone for everyone. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, the nerd issue. Uh, nerds are certainly uh, more accepted in society than they were a few years ago. Uh, especially, uh, you know, with Bill Gates and mm -hmm. Steve Jobs and many of the more successful mm -hmm. so-called nerd personalities. Uh, do you think that's another reason why the show was so popular? I, I think, you know, smart is the new sexy is what I've been hearing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think this sort of nerd culture really appeals to a lot of people. Yeah, I think and, so too. And now that things like Star Wars has kind of also become more of a mainstream kind of thing, we're yeah. seeing some more of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, viewers may or may not know, but you do the show live. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what are the pros and cons of doing a show like The Big Bang Theory live with a so, live audience? So we tape with a live audience, but it's not aired live. Oh, okay. So we get to yeah, yeah. do things many, many times. A lot of times things that don't work all week work in front of the audience, yeah. and things that you think are going to work all week don't, and so we get to change it and do it again. They're basically a test market. Pretty much, they yeah. are a sampling of the American public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did want to mention that this is not your first hit show. Uh, that at 15 years old, you landed the role as Blossom mm -hmm. uh, on NBC, and we go on to produce. I couldn't believe it when I read 114 episodes. Five years. W what was it like for you as a teenager growing up on television? Um, it was terrifying, <laughs> but it was it was also a really um, a really nice set. I didn't see drugs and alcohol and there wasn't partying and there wasn't the internet craziness of publicity there, there, there then. There was not. No. It was a very nice set to grow up on. Yeah. Um, so I actually feel really fortunate. Don Rio created a really interesting show when he created Blossom. Sure and did. We had a good time together. Yeah. It's nice I wasn't the only kid. We had Joey Lawrence and Jenna Von Oy, so oh, yeah. we were like our own social group. <laughs> now, now during those 114 episodes, as an actress, were you ever concerned uh, about being typecast as her? that might hinder future job opportunities? Once you're contracted for five years with NBC, you kind of just ride the train till it stops. <laughs> <laughs> and you rode it. <laughs> I did want to mention that during Blossom towards the end, uh, that was like in, in 93, uh, you were you know, time to go to college. And you mm -hmm. were accepted by Harvard mm -hmm. and Yale mm -hmm. and chose UCLA. And I was just wondering well, why so? Um, well, I had to defer for two years. Okay. and. Um, Harvard was where I was going to go because I had friends there. Um, Harvard did not honor my deferment for oh, two years. Oh, all right, that's that which was, was kind reason. of interesting. Yeah. Um, but I'm yeah. actually. I mean, my brother was a Bruin, and my grandparents all lived in LA. And my parents mm -hmm. lived in LA, so it was a, a combination of good coincidences. And, I, and now that I have had the experience, yeah, I understand that people like you know Ivy Leagues and private universities. But um, after my experience, I'm a huge advocate of public universities. You are. Um, I am. For, for me, yeah. meeting people from all, all different socioeconomic backgrounds sure. was important. Mm -hmm. Seeing um, that diversity that's also funded by the state, I think, is really important. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I'm just a really big fan, Good. first of all, of UCLA, but also of public universities. Sure. So. Now, as I did want to mention, before I mention it, I, I could be calling you uh, Dr. Bialik. You could. I could, right? Because <laughs> you have earned a PhD mm -hmm. in, let me get, make sure I get all this stuff right, in neuroscience mm -hmm. from UCLA, and you did your thesis. This, I'm not sure if I'll get this one right. In psychoneuroendrochronology. Uh, yep. Uh, so can you explain to us quickly what, what, it, what yeah, it is? Yeah, um, I studied obsessive compulsive disorder oh, um, okay. in a population of individuals with um, a compromised endocrine system. So that's all those words. <laughs> yeah. 